Let's get you a preview here of what to expect. Kujan Subani, Bloomberg Intelligence, is senior semiconductor analyst, uh, joining us right now. And uh, Kujan, we haven't gotten those numbers yet, but you know expectations are high. Uh, what exactly do you think they can say or they can print in that report that's going to justify that big run-up that we had in this stock prior to the last couple of days? Well, I think including us and definitely most investors, everyone expects a beat and a raise. However, the magnitude of those would be moderated versus what we have seen in 2023. I think something that can really um, validate would be that the demand signals continue to be strong, especially if they give any commentary around enterprise spending momentum in AI. We all know that the largest cloud customers are spending significant amount in AI capex, which is really driving most of this growth. Mm -hmm. But it would be great to see enterprise and growth outside of these cloud customers. Now, I, I am curious, uh, Kujan, there was a lot of discussion today about uh, the down draft that we saw in Palo Alto Networks and some of the cybersecurity stocks. And I know we're talking about completely different businesses here, but the concern was that there was a slowdown or maybe just a bit of a rethink in corporate IT spending that maybe their costs had gotten a little bit too inefficient and they need to start looking at things. Is that at all going to be an issue that NVIDIA will have to confront? Not specific to NVIDIA. I mean, we have no, we have not seen any signs of demand slowing for NVIDIA specific products. You got to remember, you know, it is still supply constraint. So everyone is still trying to get their hands on as many NVIDIA GPUs they can. And so you, you could see sort of a over buildup of inventory through that. But right now, people are just glad to get as many GPUs they can from NVIDIA. I'm curious, Kunjin, if you could talk a little bit about the long-term aspects of this AI sort of boom and what is maybe priced into the space with respect to expectations. So clearly, expectations are very, very robust in the short term. But if you're looking out three to five years, do you see those expectations generally as achievable? Or are we getting to the point where our, even our long-term expectations are just too high here? I mean, um, when you look at the overall sort of AI uh, spending rally, um, things definitely look elevated. I think at some point in the future, the growth rate is likely to normalize. But having said that, you know, it, it's difficult to really say if this rally has legs to go on for five to 10 years. But for NVIDIA specific, we don't see any significant risk for at least until 2025. I think some of the risks regarding China and regarding its largest customers designing their own chips and if that can slow down its growth trajectory, um, if they do come to fruition, it would be more of a 2026 story. And I think numbers just dropped. NVIDIA results crossing the wire right now, Kujan. Sit tight for one second. Revenue in the most recent quarter, the fourth quarter, $22.1 billion. The street, on average, was looking for $20.41, so a beat on the revenue side here. Uh, gross margins in the quarter, wow, 76.7%. That was their adjusted gross margin in the fourth quarter, a beat uh, versus what the street was looking for for 75.4. Data center revenue in the quarter also beat 18.4 billion. The street was looking for 17.2 billion. Gaming revenue also a beat. Automotive revenue also a beat here as well. Here's your forecast going forward. For the first quarter, the company says revenue will come in at about $24 billion plus or minus 2%. The street, on average, was looking for 21.9. So okay. we'll just round that up to about $22 billion a year. So it looks, uh, Gina Martin-Adams, like, uh, at least on some of the main metrics here, they did appear to be here, but not by a huge margin. And you're seeing that maybe reflected in the stock market reaction. Yeah, though I'd say, you know, down 2% looks like a light day for NVIDIA as of late. <laughs> it, nonetheless, it does appear that, you know, they had great numbers across the board, as far as I can tell. I'm curious what Kinjin thinks. But... Uh, it looks like they had pretty great numbers. It just wasn't quite enough to sustain what had been a really high-flying stock price. And Kuja, maybe you can weigh in here. I know you haven't had a whole lot of time uh, to look at this, but I think what jumps out at me is not just the revenue growth. I mean, a company that, let's face it, had about half this revenue just three quarters ago, but also gross margins. I mean, that's insane. 77% gross margins? I mean, wh 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 where is that coming from? Yeah, and it's really reflected in driving from the data center business. Look, NVIDIA right now is not selling chips, it's selling data center systems mm -hmm. and is enjoying gross margins as high as a software company. So they have a lot of pricing power. Um, another thing is as their H200s continue to ramp and become a larger portion of their GPU penetration, that is really also helping them with their ASP. So again, everything is going their way. In fact, 
in near, we expect the B100 to be announced soon, and that will again be a tailwind to gross margins for the rest of the year. What do you think, Kunjin? What does this mean for the rest of the, the space? I mean, you've got a super microcomputer now down 4% post-market after these NVIDIA results. What do you think the read-through is for the rest of the space after these results? I think the read-through is really positive, and it, it should ease some of the concerns that some folks are having, whether the AI rally can continue in 24. You know, the upside, even though less than 10%, but still validates that, A, supply is coming on better as planned, but more importantly, that the demand strength is there. And like I said, again, I would like to hear more on the demand from the enterprise side when it comes to AI spending, and because that should signal for the entire space that the AI rally is at least going to continue. All right, Kujan Sabani uh, over at Bloomberg Intelligence. Uh, really love having him here to get that instant reaction and analysis to these numbers.